au kia tata a ko te mea tuatahi e tikana ki amiha te kia koe te ranga tire TK te kura a tena koe tukuna te whakaunui ki tō tātou nei atua nei rātou mihia te kia koe kia koe te tuahine kei mari a nei rātou mihia te kia koe i whakahuaki e e e whakahaere ana i tēnei kaupapa a ngā mihi nui kia koe o tiano koutou ngā kānohi o tēnā rohi o tēnā rohi uh, Houston, Texas, as well, I might add. Uh, nei rā te mihi atu ki a koutou. Uh, ko ai tēnei, uh, ko ngō Ngāti Kahanunu tēnei, Ngāti Kahanunu me Ngāti Pāhau wera. Um, ko rākau tātahi me te rongo ātahu ngā marae, ko Whatu Mā Te Waiu. Um, ko ngā pai mau ngā rua hine um, me te taumata uh, puera. Nā reira, ko puera keironga, ko Whatu Mā Keiraro, a tihei mau i ora, ko Paul Sharon tōku ingoa, tēnā koutou. Kia ora koutou katoa, uh, ko Shalom Hainga Ahau, um, I had a pretty active um, whānau, so on that note, got whakapapa all over the place, place from um, up the east coast, Ngāti Parau, Tainui, Ngāti Mani Apoto, uh, Kaitahu, me Ngāti Kahunga Nui Hoki, where I also um, live and reside here in Hiri Tonga. Um, Yep, formerly with TPK, supported the initiation of this report, Mahi, um, before finishing up and heading over to Sharon Associates, where I'm a project manager. And looking forward to this corridor. Kia ora. Kia ora. All right. So, fantastic. Awesome kaupapa. Congratulations to Penny Kokiri putting this on. Uh, well attended. So, just and very aware that um, uh, I've heard about Kay Marie. She drives a hard waka. She's going to keep us all in time, so I better get on. <laughs> Come on. So, um, together, we're going to provide a presentation in terms of Papa Kainga that we've worked with, worked on over the past 10 years. And uh, we're going to share some stories, but we're also going to try and tie it into the district plans, the consent processes, some of the issues, some of the challenges, uh, but also things that are working too because we want to say from the outset that we think that um, council processes to what they are today, uh, as opposed to what they were 10 years ago, are a lot different. Yeah, that's what we're experiencing, hey? So um, we're just so, in terms of Sharon Associates, we are a project management, <coughs> excuse me, excuse my voice too, we're just getting over a bit of the sickness here in the office, but we're a pro uh, project management and construction company. We started back in 2012 13, um, and we were project managing some fantastic projects funded by Tupuni Kokiri uh, back in the day. And then Sharon Associates was established, and now we have a team of eight, and we have a number of projects throughout the Motu um, in the North Island. And just definitely looking for a project in Queenstown. Anyway, so just a little bit about us there. So homes built over the past 10 years, about 120. Uh, some of those are coming, are still in construction, coming near to end. Projects within 30 projects across 16 different councils. Okay. Um, some of those are, uh, are regional councils, uh, but majority are district councils. So just want to do a shout out also to Waitomo, just in case Waitomo Council's on. Sorry, we didn't put you up there, but... We've got a pretty cool project over at uh, Taharo uh, in the Waitomo District Council area. So we've used the projects um, that we're completing, have completed within these different district councils and regional councils just to provide some feedback um, and hopefully create some discussions or pat, pat people on the back sort of thing so, uh, or, or talk about some challenges, yeah? So we're based in Heretonga in Hastings, and the majority of our Papa Kainga have been here under the Hastings District, uh, Hastings District Council area. Hastings District has a very enabling district plan for Papa Kainga. Um, not saying, saying that they're the only ones, but they have a very enabling uh, district plan. Basically, in Hastings and the district plan, you can build as many houses on your Māori freehold land as you can put infrastructure services. Yep. So that means um, you can build from three to ten 
to 20 as long as you can put the infrastructure in. Okay, working with district council uh, Hastings, so that and that's dated back for probably over well before we started public hiring actually. Um, they actually have a section within the district plan specifically for public hiring. Okay, and having a section uh, in the district plan for public hiring means that our Fano have a place to go. You know, and when I say our Fano. You know, we generally process or, or prepare the resource consents and all of that on behalf of within the district, uh, Hastings district, uh, because you know there's there's a section in there, there's criteria that we need to meet. It's all spelt out there. There's a, a, an example of the um, the uh, district plan there. You know, sometimes it's a bit of a ha when you've got to fill out an application or a consent, but at least it gives you a process to work through um, and to tick all the boxes and make sure that everything uh, has been thought about, included, and um, signed off. And for us, it's about getting through that process to a point of being shovel ready. So part of the, um, I just want to do a shout out to Tupini Kokiri as well as well as Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, who fund Papa Kainga projects. Um, and when we go to, so we have there's two two definite processes within a Papa Kainga process. The first one being the feasibility study, where we build it on paper, and we get our consents. Uh, we have our master plan. We know what we're doing. We get compliance. We cost it out, and we apply for the funding. And it's that that stage there where we need to be shovel ready, okay? And having a resource consent for the project in terms of uh, successfully getting funding for the project includes having a resource consent, okay? I just also want to acknowledge that. Um, we've, as we mentioned, there's a number of, we've, we've worked in a number of different regions. Um, if you're building a proper kayanga in Hastings, you have to get a resource consent. If you're building a proper kayanga in Wairau, then you're only getting a resource consent if you trigger um, one of the activities. Yeah, and that's probably the same across a number of different uh, district councils. However, what it does mean, and that if there's no specific section within the district plan, then we actually have to trade through the whole district plan, looking for the kupu Māori, to make sure that we're checking each of those components off within that district plan. So I'm just saying it, it's very helpful from a, a project perspective when there is a place to go to in the district plan um, and it has the criteria that we have to meet. This project here, um, it's based in Waimara uh, in Hastings District Council. Um, and this is what we were sort of talking a bit about before and that um, what we're seeing is a change within councils. We know that historically in Hastings um, was very hard to build on green fields. Now that there's a Papakainga section in the district plan, we can we can now build on our green fields. And I want to say 98%, if not 99% of Māori freehold land is rural, um, no council services. And um, so once again, that's very uh, beneficial. And a lot of those stats that you saw there, the 120 homes, you know, probably 70% of them are inside the um, Hastings District Council um, district plan. We brought this project up purely because of the beautiful view, um, being one of the reasons. Uh, but in terms of talking about what used to happen and the way council is now, um, back in the day, this project, when we were completing the feasibility study, 
uh, we found that there was a council water pipe running through the whenua. No easement, no initial consultation with the Fano. The pipe came from a spring to feed a set of tanks where the water is treated and then supplied to the Waimarama community. Um, so, you know, I guess what we're saying is just like the greenfields, things have moved forward and um, another knows, um, I'll call them shady, but silly things are happening nowadays. The solution was that the, um, the pipe had to be redirected outside of the Papakainga boundary, taken past the Papakainga, but it had to be brought back into the overall Māori land block to hook back into itself. Um, again, this, this project required a resource consent, um, and basically when we're getting resource consents, we're having to get our road designs, our engineer road designs signed off by the council, um, stormwater-wise, um, if there's on a hill gradient wise and all of that, obviously our earthworking and everything has to fall within the uh, parameters uh, and everything. But yeah, we just wanted to bring this project up in terms of um, some of the things that we're still working through that happened before. Um, barriers and challenges. Um, this National policy standard for highly productive land. Um, I'm sure a lot of us are aware that back in 67, the late 60s, there was a, a piece of legislation enacted, Māori Fairs Amendment Act, whereby uh, if there were less than four owners of Māori freehold land, then the land, uh, the Māori Land Court could change the status of their land from Māori land to general land. That's fine because it could. Uh, before the uh, the NPS, um, we could still build papakainga on that land, even though it was general land, because it was ancestral land. <coughs> Excuse me. Fast forward to the NPS, what it's done is added another layer uh, to the whole process, and we all know that another layer means more time and more cost. And it's actually got to the point where whānau are having to change, go through a Māori land court process to change that land back from general, which was never their choice in the first place, back to uh, Māori freehold land so that a papakainga um, project can actually go ahead uh, on that land. Okay. Um, so that's just a little bit about that. So council consents and fees. In a papakainga project um, here in Hastings, we're having to get resource consents. Okay, we've been in the um, in the space for long enough that we can process a resource consent on behalf of the whanau to keep the cost down. But generally, a resource consent is costing anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars. Okay, um, so that's the resource consent in terms of the land use. Um, we're obviously having to get a wastewater discharge consent and a stormwater discharge consent. Once again, 98% of Māori freehold land or, or, or ancestral land is rural, so not a lot of council um, services. So we're having to introduce all of the infrastructure. So on average, you know, each regional council consent application fee here in Hawke's Bay is about 2,000 plus GST, 2,300. You know, so already we are over $15,000 in, cons in consent charges. Um, the other consents for papakainga, obviously building consents, we get that. We need building consents. It is what it is. Uh, we want building consents to make sure that the our houses are built correctly um, and to code and that council is signing every, at every stage. Get we getting this, the sign-off, okay? Uh, but in some cases, if we're 10 houses in that papakainga, you know, that's anywhere from eight to $10,000. So there could be anywhere from eighty to $100,000 there. You know, I'm just giving an example of what a total um, consent fee across a project looks like. And then last but not least, the development contributions. 
you know, uh, once again, not a lot of services hooking into uh, council services are available to hook into. So on average, we're really just hooking into or using roads, parks, reserves, libraries, and the things which Fano are either paying as a um, as a tenant, and you know, inside their rent, which services the rates. You know, so what we're saying is that these costs, the Fano are actually living in the district, paying for these costs anyway. And then we're we're stung with a development contribution per house for um, each of the ten houses, you know, and so on average, um, user pays. So once again, we're, with an hour, probably averaging about six to seven thousand dollars, you know. And then once the development contributions are paid, the houses are built, we start to pay rates. So you know, I don't know if this is the right forum. But I think Papa Kainga, and I know in some areas they get 50% discounts. And correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe in Ōtautahi or down in the in the South Island, they may even forego development contributions. Um, but at least consideration, uh, because it's not a developer developing the land to make a profit. It's a social, affordable, healthy um, home project. And, you know, once again, so you, what is that? That's sort of like 15, 100, you know, we're, we're up to 200, $250,000 almost of fees inside a Papa Kainga project. Um, quickly, building consents, uh, um, more so when it was busy, when there was a lot of building consents uh, being submitted, a lot of our consents were being uh, sent out to the different regions. You know, and we might have three consents for one project going in at the same time. One might stay here, one might go to Auckland, one might go to Christchurch. Um, so not very efficient and effective. Um, they might not know much about Papa Kainga, Um, But I want to say that that's probably changed now because the, the, the boom's gone and we're, we're heading towards a bit of a downturn. So what I know at the moment is all, most, if not all, our consents are uh, being assessed in region, but in case we go to that again, and I'm sure we will, you know, there's something to consider when consents are being sent out to different regions, that maybe Papa Kainga consents should be held inside that region um, and specific to the resource consent of that region, and the which is basically ticking the district plan rules of that region. Um, Councils, we're finding councils are also requiring a lot more technical de uh, detail. Um, I want to say back in the day, you know, we might have been getting conditions inside the resource consent, uh, which meant we could get it out a lot quicker and get moving a lot quicker um, at, a, at a lower cost. Um, we're now being required to get our stormwater discharge consents and our wastewater discharge consents before we go into building consent which means more time we have to pay civil engineers um, to produce the calculations for stormwater discharge, which is boom, um, bumping up the costs at the front end. Now, we're talking about costs because at the moment there's not a lot of grant money around for costs and Fano are having to fund their own feasibility studies. So it's just we're just talking about this because it's just adding extra time and extra costs onto Fano. Um, I do want to say, though, that, you know, over the 16 or, say, even 12 district councils that we have worked with, the staff, the team are always very uh, proactive and supportive. So the people are supportive and proactive, but sometimes hamstrung by the policies. You know, it's the same when we talk about Wellington. You know, it's the policies that drive everything. Same in terms of the district councils, what we find is that some of the policies may need to be looked at, uh, updated, I guess, uh, so that it can provide a more smoother uh, process for final. You've just muted yourself. Yes, you still, um... Did we? Mm, that one. Sorry. Good point. Cool. So we're talking about ancestral land. Yeah. Land that's been held in 
historical ownership from the beginning. We're talking about culture. You know, we're talking about moving back into an environment, a supportive environment, and a whānau environment where uh, we can bring back, start to re uh, introduce, I guess, our culture, our tikanga, and that. Uh, what would be helpful? You know, pre application hui with council. You know, we, we quite often have pre application hui with our district council here in Heretonga. If there is no district plan uh, section specific to Papakai in the district plan, that would be helpful. Not um, pointing out specifically, but we did a project in Manawa too. They, at the time, they didn't have a specific. Uh, section, and that was one of the projects we had to trace through the whole um, district plan, looking for the kupu Māori and answering all of that. Uh, we actually had to outsource that, uh, which increased the costs. A joint approach between regional and district. We found from the water issue here in Havelock North, one of the findings was that regional and district could liaise a lot better. Well, we, we want to say the same thing in terms of papakainga development, uh, that there should be some sort of a, a better way of liaising in terms of the criteria, the rules between regional and district, um, and then maybe a streamlined process internally with councils, because what we're also finding is that internally, um, and we've had this feedback from teams and council, is that the planning works in a silo, consents work in a silo, you know, so quite often we're getting asked questions that we've already answered in the planning uh, department. We're getting asked the same questions in the um, in the consent, building consent process. Um, how are we going? 10 seconds. 10 seconds, okay. So, kāpāi, I mean, you know, hey, if I'd have let Shalom talk, we would have talked for 40 minutes. But because uh, <laughs> Shalom's got a lot of experience on three sides of the fence. One being on the Fano side, one being on the Sharon side, one being in Tipuni Kokiri side. Um, and she's actually walked that process. But 20 minutes is 20 minutes, and it looks like it's up, Kay Marie. Uh -huh. Kia ora.